So SWIFT acts as staff. So what's going to happen to the future of SWIFT and for its user base? So my name's David Heatley here from Cycling Inform. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about my thoughts on SWIFT and where I think they're going with all of this. But before I get started, just make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow me on Facebook. I post new videos all the time on these platforms and you'll get access to that exclusive content when it comes up. And obviously, if you like this video, just click on the thumbs up button that just helps with the algorithm and don't forget to click on the subscribe button so that you get notified when we post new videos on Facebook. So let's get into it. So the first thing I want to talk about is Swift's disruptive, no, disruptive. <laughs> so what I want to talk about is Swift's uh, disruptive place in the marketplace. Now, um, it's not a new thing. Disruptive technology marketplaces has been around for a long time. We've seen that technology come through, certainly in my lifetime in cycling, I've seen and in no particular order. Uh, and, and certainly, um, obviously not a totally complete list, but we've seen these sorts of innovations happen within cycling. We've seen like, for example, the look uh, clipless pedals coming into the market in 1984 and basically changed the way that we clip into pedals before that we had toe clap toe clips and straps uh, and certainly when I started riding that was what I started on until I migrated to clipless pedals we've seen the innovations around time trial bars and aero equipment coming into cycling of course back in the 1980s we were all riding on bikes that had aero nothing uh, we've seen the introduction of index gearing to downshifters and then moving up to the Shimano STI shifters, which replaced down tube shifters entirely. And now we change gears, you know, using our brake levers. Um, we've seen Garmin um, totally oust Polar from the cycling market. And we've certainly seen Wahoo coming in with bike computers. So, you know, when I first started coaching, Polar was basically the bike computer to buy. And then Garmin came on board. And within a year, most of my clients have migrated across, you know, gotten rid of their Polar computer, migrated across to, uh, you know, a Garmin computer. Uh, and we've seen Wahoo kickers uh, have a major impact on introducing a smart trainer that actually worked. Now, there are a few smart trainers before that. Cycle Ops was one of them. But uh, uh, kicker, you know, Wahoo Kicker basically created a, a trainer that worked, uh, was really reliable, and um, and in in partnership with Trainer Road was able to really take over the market when it came to home trainers. Now, of course, we've seen a lot more uh, indoor trainers introduced into the market that are smart, and you know, Wahoo Kicker have seen a lot more competition into the market now. But they were certainly the leaders in creating this disruptive um, emerging technology and using smart trainers as, as an entry point into the market. So uh, we've seen Strava come in. Look, I'm not too sure what Strava really asked, but it was certainly an innovative technology. We've obviously seen carbon fiber frames replacing aluminum and steel frames. Uh, we've seen, um, you know, Swift basically, where Swift has, you know, ousted trainer road to a certain degree. And I'll talk a little bit about that later on. And, and then we've seen obviously disc brakes replacing our uh, a rim break. So there's certainly been a lot of things that is happening, you know, in my lifetime around cycling and disruptive uh, emerging technologies. And Swift is certainly, you know, one of them. So um, now where Swift's done really super well is that they've used gamification in, um, you know, in putting together their training platform instead of coming coming into thinking about helping cyclists train by using training methodology of helping cyclists train through an experience and gamification. So what do I mean by gamification? Well, and Strava users as well, you know, they have these little trinkets, like you get awards. So Strava's got these things, you know, you have these little challenges that they want you to do uh, and they promote them. And of course you sign up for them and then you get, you know, a little trinket, a little 
kudos well not kudos that's that's swift of course but you get you know you get a little badge all right and of course swift is no different they come and they've come from this whole let's see what we can do around gamifying the whole cycling experience so of course you know you as you spend more time on a platform you get upgrades to your bike and you get stuff unlocked and you get courses unlocked and then people are giving you kudos and and they also have challenges as well and it's it's a great thing i think it's gamification and in the industry is uh, fantastic you know it's um it's good and i'm just reading my notes here you know it really helps with motivation this world needs more people exercising more often like you know we've got onset early onset diabetes and stuff, some big major health issues that are facing um, society at the moment. And anything that helps people exercise is a good thing. And I think Swift's fantastic. And it's a good entry point, you know, for introducing people to cycling in a safe uh, environment. And then, you know, if they want to take it a little bit further, then they obviously want to approach somebody like myself as a cycling coach to help them. But anyway, oh, look, we use Swift. Our clients use Swift. Um, you know, structured training programs. Swift's one of the options that we give our clients to train on. But for us, it's not really about the training platform. It's about the training that they're doing. And they can pretty much do the sessions that we're looking for them to do on any platform. It doesn't really matter what platform they're using. It's just whatever preference. You know, if they're using Swift, that's fantastic. If you're using Trainer Row, well, that's good as well. If you're using, you know, some of the other platforms like Full Gas, we just interface into all of them because like I mentioned, it's not about the, it's not about the, you know, it's not about the training platform. It's about the actual session. It's not about the experience. It's like, we want them to target specific, you know, cadences, specific zones, uh, and, you know, specific lengths of intervals to help, you know, work on a particular weakness or improve a particular strength. All right. So, um, now look, I don't have the stats on, what sort of um, membership base Swift has, but I would guarantee that out of the major players that we have in the space, which are like Trainer Road, Swift, Be Cool, Wahoo Systems, which was formerly uh, Sufferfest, Ruby, and Full Gas, Swift's probably right up there. I think I think they've probably got a huge following, uh, and more of a following than any other training platforms. And like I say, that's that's a great thing. So. Um, so let's jump into the cycling. You know, I just was reading the cycling tips report, and I think it's kind of uh, put some interesting points around. You know, how does this? You know, what is the future of Swift? They're laying off staff. What what sort of what sort of impact is that going to have on um, you know on the users of the platform? So I'm going to just jump into the article here. I'm just going to share my screen. And uh, and I was just reading this. This is on cycling tips. Um, and they have been laying off staff. So, um, you know, and similar to Peloton and Wahoo, you know, they're all been laying off staff uh, in recent times. Not surprising though. I mean, we've had this massive COVID uh, boom to the industry and now people are obviously wanting, you know, they're not locked up in their house anymore uh, and they're able to get out and explore the landscape. So there's gonna be, you know, these platforms are gonna become a little bit less popular um, just only purely because the market shifted a little bit. And that's fine. Like it's natural and normal for that to happen. Um, but, you know, and they've made the decision to lay off staff and halt the development of their hardware, hardware range. And I'll come to that a little bit later on because it's a very interesting point. Now, they released a statement saying that, you know, because of the macro macroeconomics, you know, and the reason for the Holton hardware development program. So it's, you know, the macro macroeconomic environment. <laughs> That's what they've called it. You know, uh, hardly surprising with supply chain issues, increased cost, uh, uh, you know, throughout this sector. You know, it's just, they were, they were basically looking at, um, and I, you know, this is with, for the Swift platform to grow, they can either continue to gamify what they're doing and develop their platform a little bit more, but there's really not a lot of room. Uh, and so I think the marketing team, and that's just, this is just my own opinion, has gone, well, what sort of other opportunities can we, you know, work through and, and develop? And so they've gone, well, let's look at, you know, the home trainer um, industry and sort of Wahoo's done very well with that. They've created the Wahoo Kicker and then they've created a whole ecosystem around it. They've got, you know, a riser and they've got a fan and they've got a few other devices and stuff. And they've even brought out a specific Wahoo bike, right? 
Uh, and then they've gotten into the training platform. They've basically bought out Sufferfest and integrated that into their into their um, into the ecosystem. So they not not only provide you know training equipment, but they've also got a training platform that their clients can use as well. So you know they're they're diversifying. And Swift's obviously seeing that you know like well they're seeing that sort of stuff, and they go well why why don't we create an ecosystem? There's a great opportunity there, and sort of from a competitive point of view, we can step into that. So. Um, so I think, you know, from a, from a marketing and sort of a business point of view, that's kind of a smart move if you're kind of starting to saturate or, you know, develop out as much as you can do in your own space, you look at other markets that you can tap into that are aligned with what you're doing and use that as a stepping stone to, you know, get more market share in another particular industry. I'm always, I'm always, um, I'm always a little bit reserved about businesses doing that going from, um, from their core business to something else, you know, uh, because there's always there's always a it may or may not work. And like uh, Wahoo have done super well with it; they've done exceptionally well with it and creating their ecosystems as well. Uh, look, I don't think their training platform will ever be as big as Swift, but um, but it's just an added thing that they can offer to their clients uh, under the brand. So. Anyway, uh, you know, good old DC Rainmaker has been involved in this and stuff. And um, so, <clears throat> and like I say here, you know, the last in less than six months, I've teased this new smart trainer and direct drive trainers to customer survey, you know. And it's interesting because it seems that, and they mentioned here that maybe already too late, you know, the, the sense that this past winter in the Northern Hemisphere might have been the last period of high demand for premium trainers for a while as COVID newcomers to indoor training riding upgrade their initial entry level purchases. You know, it's a great article. And I think there's a lot of truth about um, the uh, author of this article. They're basically saying, well, look, I think the ship sailed when it comes to opportunities for people to invest in um, high end uh, indoor uh, trainer, smart indoor trainers. So, you know, and, you know, Swift's director, uh, Chris Snook, I hope that's the way you pronounce it, basically talked to Cycling Tips and said, we've scaled our business to support a significant expansion. You know, we have scaled our business to support a significant expansion into hardware. The difficult but necessary decision to reduce the size of the business accounts for a loss of projected revenue that ultimately would have been driven by hardware. All right. So Swift's basically looking for other opportunities to make money. All right. Um, so they're calling it a pause rather than a halt, meaning that, however unlikely it seems, Swift hasn't ruled out that one day returning to the hardware market. And look, I think, you know, when those opportunities are on and it makes economic sense, then they probably will get back into that hardware market again. Um, but, you know, uh, who knows how long that's going to you know, who knows when that's going to happen. All right. So, um, so he also mentioned, and I don't know when this article was written, but um, he pointed out Swift's subscription numbers are still growing, okay? And that the pause in hardware development means an increased focus on the core Swift software experience, all right? So, you know, it's always important to protect your existing markets. And I, and I think Swift's doing, the, you know, the right thing. So, um, so where do I think everybody's going with this? I think I think from a from a user point of view, obviously we're not going to see any smart trainers coming out from Swift in the near future. That's that kind of now has been driven into the coffin around that. We're just not going to see that in the near future. It sounds like it may be on the cards of the future, and I think that uh, Swift will look at other avenues to generate. Um, other markets and I think that obviously a smart trainer or getting into hardware is a great move for them who knows what other things they may dream up to get into but from a, a point of view you know I think Swift's pretty safe I think from a user point of view they're obviously not going to go bust they've got a fantastic following and a subscription based service which is always awesome when it comes to businesses because you can it's bankable money that money is just coming in all the time uh, you're not going you know as a business they're not having to go out and hunt for more you know for business every every single month they've basically got a stream of income coming in that they can use to basically invest in other technologies and and other interests within their business so so i don't think swift's going to go away the other thing is what about competitors entering the market and we've seen other competitors and obviously they've got their own little different angles around how they're sort of working within the market and their sort of market niche 
uh, depending on the, the platform that you're using. Look, I think, you know, from a competitive point of view, personally, I think it's going to be reasonably, um, and but not impossible, for another company to come in and do the similar sort of thing as what Swift's doing around the gamification of cycling. Whether a business would actually want to do that because Swift has such, um, such a hold on that market and they've invested a lot of money into it to develop it. Um, I don't think, I think most businesses would look at that and go, well, Swift's kind of really cornered this market. We could, if we invested a stack load of money into it, maybe compete with them. But, um, you know, there may be other opportunities in the market that are going to be more, um, you know, more better for them to, to get into rather than trying to keep, you know, trying to run head on head with, with Swift. So I think from a, um, from a business point of view, I think we're not going to see, uh, like, for example, if we go and look at, um, say, we look at um, uh, Netflix, okay, so Netflix was a, a company that basically interrupted the entire industry around streaming media, you know, they knocked out video chains and and uh, made a big impact on the streaming media. Now, there's a lot of competitors that have entered that space. And as a consequence, Netflix is really sort of, you know, suffering, not necessarily suffering, but, you know, their window of opportunity is kind of gone now. You know, they're now at the same, you know, the other, their other competitors have come up at the same market level as them. And, um, and as a consequence, you know, it's becoming more of a leveling, level playing field and it's more about content than it is about to the technology. So, you know, um, and uh, as a consequence, I mean, Netflix being pretty good at basically providing really good content, but their competitors are becoming really good at that as well. I don't think we're going to see that personally uh, with Swift. I don't think we're going to see competitors rise to that sort of level as Swift is. Um, I probably what I do see happening in, in this space is I think there's going to be a lot more sort of uh, AI, artificial intelligence being applied to the uh, analytics. Um, and, um, and that's a space where I think there's certainly a lot of room for growth in, in you know, the next developments that we're going to see around you know, innovation and, and cycling and metrics and training. So anyway, look, uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video and it's been interesting and I haven't waffled on for too long. Um, you know, definitely comment below with your thoughts on what I've talked about and whether you think Swift is going to be around for a while or whether it's just going to die. Um, Look, I don't think it is, but you know, it'd be interesting to hear your comments. And look, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow me on Facebook. You know, like I mentioned, we do post new videos all the time, and I do share exclusive content that isn't published anywhere else on these platforms. And we're going to be doing a lot more of that. And if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and don't forget to click on the notification bell um, to make sure that you get notified, notified, notified when we upload uh, new videos. Anyway, thanks for watching. It's been David Heatley here from Cycling Inform.